Welcome to this module about the conditional Gaussian distribution. This is known as lemma 7.1 in the textbook. It's a lemma that we use several times throughout the course. For example, we used it to derive the indirect parameter estimation method in the nonlinear transformation of stochastic variable video. We will also use it later on to prove the Kalman filter. So what does lemma 7.1 state? It states that if x and y are two jointly distributed Gaussian variables, according to this joint distribution, then the conditional distribution of x, given the observed value of y, is also Gaussian distributed according to this distribution here. We see that the mean is the previous mean plus a compensation due to the difference between the observed and the expected value of y, and that the covariance becomes smaller when we add information. It's also important to note that the covariance does not depend on the observed value of y. So we'll start with an illustrating example. Here we have a parameter x with true value 1 that we have a prior information about, uh, illustrated by this uh, green line and uh, uncertainty uh, around it. And we have measurements y that are 3 times x plus measurement noise. We can now, based on this, compute the joint distribution of x and y. Get this form. And uh, that is illustrated by this red uh, ellipsoid. If you now get an observation of y here, the uncertainty based on the measurement noise indicated by this blue here, then we can use the lemma to compute the conditional distribution of x given y. Given by this expression here and illustrated by this dark area here that uh, represents the uncertainty and the new mean. We see that the mean is now much closer to the true one and that the uncertainty has uh, dropped quite a lot. We start by looking at the covariance matrix of the joint distribution, which we make a block LDL decomposition of, giving this uh, form here. If you don't know this LDL decomposition from before, just multiply these matrices together and you'll see that you get what you started with. Next, we will actually denote this uh, element here with P to simplify our notation further. And this element here with K. We can now write the covariance matrix as a product of three matrices. We'll now use this to compute the determinant of the joint covariance matrix as needed by the Gaussian distribution. We use the fact that uh, the determinant of a product is the product of determinants. We furthermore use that for this triangular matrix, the determinant is the product of the elements in the diagonal, which are all one, so it's one, and that the determinant of this block diagonal matrix is the product of the determinants of the blocks. So we have this simple expression for the determinants. Next, we look at the inverse of the covariance matrix. We start by pushing in the inverse, which uh, we can do if we change the order of these matrices and invert them separately. Next, we'll notice that the inverse of this block triangular matrix is uh, easily computed by just inserting a minus in front of the K. And that uh, inverse of the block diagonal matrix is the inverse of the block elements, like that. Now we'll compute the full exponent of the joint Gaussian distribution. Uh, and this is the expression that's given from the start. We now introduce our factored inverse, get this. Then we multiply these two matrices together, likewise with these, and we get this form. Next, let this expression up here, x 
tilde minus k y tilde equal to x bar. We now have a fairly simple expression for this matrix that we'll uh, use further. Now we're ready to attack the full expression for the conditional distribution. We start by inserting the two things that we have found out so far, the simplified expression for the determinants and for the exponents here. Gives us this. Next, we multiply these three matrices together and get this form here. Now we notice that this factor here is the same as this one here, and that this one matches this one. We can cancel them out. Finally, we just have to expand the different uh, components in this expression to get the end result. We have x bar is equal to, after some steps, x minus the expected value of x plus k times the observed value of y minus the expected value of y. k as given before and p. And if we now put it all together, we see that the new distribution is given by a Gaussian distribution with exactly the form stated in the lemma. To summarize, we have studied lemma 7.1 from the textbook, a lemma that is used several times throughout the course. It gives us an expression for the conditional distribution of x given y if x and y are jointly distributed Gaussian stochastic variables according to this form up here. Read more about this in section 7.1.3 in the textbook.